Doc, just the experience today, Lou talked about how on the bench it was different than when he was playing, how behind had that perspective, but once he was on the court, it all kind of melted away and it was just basketball. From your perspective, what was the atmosphere like as you're focused on the game, but also seeing everything around you? Well, you know, it's different when you walk out on the floor, but once the game starts, it's just, it's just basketball. You know, it's, I think it's easier for a coach because you're, you're pretty much focused that way anyway. Um, it was interesting to see the players, you know, early on, I thought all the players sat in their seats. And as the game went on, everyone was up together. Uh, I think that's the only thing that we're probably going to have to change a little bit is the bench seating. Um, it's not like we're next to each other every day in practice. We're practicing against each other every day. So uh, it's just a natural thing that the players are going to start being around each other. Uh, and I thought that was great. Uh, overall, I thought our, our spirit was great, you know, in the game. And one of the things that, that is new is you can hear your teammates cheering for you and talking on the floor. Uh, so I thought that was okay. Yeah. Um, Sean Powell, go ahead, Sean. Yes. You asked your question. Sean is done. <laughs> Someone took his question. Even better. Jovan, let's go to Jovan. Hey, Doc, what do you think of Joakim Noah's performance today, particularly his screening and his passing? Well, he's an elite passer. Uh, we already knew that. Uh, what I love was the screening and rolling. You know, he is so used to coming towards the ball and getting the ball, and we're asking him to do something completely different, and that's screen and roll more. Uh, and so he's still getting used to it, but I thought today, overall, he did a great job. And, and he also is starting to notice the more talent we have on the floor, the more they're going to double team. You give him the ball in the middle of the paint, He's just a great decision maker. Uh, Mark Medina, go ahead. Hey, Doc. What's, what's your expectation when you look at the big picture? What the process is for the guys to get into the conditioning you want? And how do you approach that overall? Yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer. You know, I'm, I'm glad we have these three games. Um, we have eight more games before the playoffs. Uh, I think just from my perspective, uh, from just going through this one preseason game, uh, we absolutely need those games, you know, all of us. Um, you know, it's like Lou was saying, man, I've been running my butt off for, for two months, but it's nothing like a game, you know, and you can see the first three or four minutes, everyone was tugging, you know, they were a little tired. So uh, their wind will catch up quickly, uh, and then their rhythm will come. Next is uh, Tim Reynolds. Go ahead, Tim. It's kind of like the way it's all gone down there. We don't know what to expect when we get here, and then normal. Yeah. So then out there, we don't know what to expect, and then you look up and you're halfway through the first quarter, and it's a basketball game. Yeah. It's just the way this is going to be. It's, it's going yeah. to seem weird. I think it's good. Yeah, it, it, exactly. And the games are the games. I mean, once you get in between the lines, you know, you can make a case that's probably as comfortable as the players will ever be, uh, or as normal as everything will ever be, because once they get between the lines, it's a basketball game. And so I think uh, you can see that. Uh, you can see the rust and all that. But for them, they were back in their natural habitat. Thanks, Tim. Uh, Charlie, go ahead, Charlie. Doc, uh, the league announced uh, that they're going to be doing the award voting coming up uh, this weekend. Trez and Lou are on track to become the first duo ever to average 17 each off the bench. Um, how just have they been overshadowed a little bit with the new additions? How good have they been this year? It's been amazing. I don't. I think they've been better uh, because they, they're still doing it and they're doing it together now. Um, you know, so I don't even know about this award stuff. I never do. I'm the worst guy to ask, as you know. Um, but as far as you know, those two uh, getting the award together, you know, as a coach, that would be a, a dream for me. Uh, I, I would love that. I would love to see that. I think it would be a great statement, too. Uh, Ohm, go ahead. Hey, Doc, with the uh, the fanless atmosphere, was there anything you noticed today that you guys might have to adapt to moving forward as, for, as like, calling plays out or maybe guys talking to each other or, as you said, you heard the bench being lively? Anything you see that you guys might have to adapt to moving forward? 
No, I mean, the play calling is easy. I caught several plays, most of the plays without getting up. That was kind of nice, actually. I even had a conversation with Zach and James, the officials, sitting down, you know. Um, so um, maybe I'll have a better voice by the end of this. I mean, who knows? All right, Doc, last question is uh, from Kyle right there with you in Orlando. Um, do you get any early sense of who on your team might thrive in this unique environment or who just sort of goes uninterrupted? And yeah, I don't think anyone's going to be better because we're playing in this environment. I think the great players are going to still be the great players. The role players are going to be the role players. Uh, and the best team is going to win. That's, that's how I look at it. And it's going to come down to guys playing basketball, uh, doing all the little things, and it would be no difference in that way if there's fans, you know. Um, so I don't think anyone's going to be able to take advantage of this situation and be better. Uh, that's for sure.